When I'm speaking with patients in my office, especially newer patients, or when I'm out in the community, uh, I hear a lot of misconceptions about chiropractic, maybe some misinformation. And so in this segment, we'd like to discuss some of those misconceptions or that misinformation. I brought Dr. Zach Wells in today. Thanks for joining us, Dr. Zach. Thanks, Scott. I appreciate it. I had a great time last time I was here. I did too. Thank you for coming. And so one of the misconceptions I hear quite frequently is that chiropractors treat only neck or back pain. You hear that as well? I've heard that a number of times. And you and I both know that there's plenty of chiropractors who also work with extremity and other parts of the body. Sure. Um, but in talking about why people think that, um, the spine is the main conduit for how we address the physiologic problems going on with people, and those physiologic problems arise from structural shifts of the vertebra. Um, our job is to find that interference and try and remove it, and the structural shift that occurs is the primary way that we correct that. Um, if your nervous system was in your thumb, we'd be known as thumb doctors, but it's not. It's in your spine, and so neck and back is the primary area that we're working. Um, you can also have problems in the extremities, um, and some doctors focus exclusively on those things. Um, but again, for the most part, neck and back is, is what most people think of when they sure. think of chiropractors. And we know that the brain controls all functions and it Absolutely. sends uh, messages down through the spinal cord, out from the nerve roots and into all parts of the body. So oftentimes by addressing that neck or back, we can actually help problems elsewhere in the body. Yes, and, uh, and corresponding right with that, a lot of people think that because we're only neck and back doctors that our education is lacking in some way, shape or form relative to other physicians. Sure. Um, what we learn in school is nearly identical in course curriculum to any medical doctor or osteopath with the exception of pharmacology and drugs because we don't uh, necessarily believe that that's the first course of action. Um, we learn adjusting techniques, lots of adjusting techniques yes. for lots of ways of taking care sure. of people as opposed to learning the pharmaceuticals. And while they're focusing on those pharmaceuticals in school, uh, one of the areas that we cover quite a bit is uh, radiology because you know, sure. oftentimes we're taking our own yes. x-rays and reading our own x-rays and such, so I uh, spent a lot of time in there. Yes, absolutely. Um, the fearful side of people is, is really what, what drives a lot of this. And you hear a little bit of misinformation and then they become fearful. Um, and so they might be afraid of whatever the treatment uh, type might be. It might be how we're going to work on them. Um, sometimes people are afraid because they've never experienced it and they've heard from people that it can be discomforting when they get adjusted. One of the hardest things I had to learn was that in order for me to work on somebody who is injured, I'm going to have to touch them in a place that's that's possibly hurting. Sure. And I might create some discomfort. That is just part of the process. Yeah, even just doing our initial exams and we're doing the orthopedic and neurologic testings and you're, you're moving the joint, sometimes it's going to hurt them a little bit. But it's important for the patients to let us know that, communicate with us, because our, our goal and our are, we don't want to hurt people. Well, obviously, we're right. in it because we want to help people. But sometimes to help them, we have to go through a little bit of discomfort. But um, yes. you know, in the end result is they're hopefully going to feel better. Yes, and people, you know, when you get them through that process of feeling good, they want to come back. They want to keep going on with their care. They want to protect themselves as they move forward in their life. And Absolutely. so one of the, another misconception is that you have to go forever once you start care. You don't have to do anything. People sure. choose to come back because they want to be healthy, much like a gym membership. Um, when you go in to get a gym membership, they don't say, oh, you have to come get a gym membership for the rest of your life. No, but people are going to sign up year after year after year because of the physiologic benefits of, and they of know exercise and working better. out. Makes them feel better. Absolutely. Makes them think better. Makes their bodies look the way they want it to look. Vanity is a big thing. Yeah. Um, and that's okay. Um, and in the case of chiropractic, it's not necessarily even just feeling better, but it's being healthier overall. Yes. We have lots of patients yes. mention that they get less colds or less flus, that their asthma symptoms are better, their allergies are better, such things. And so they realize this and they want to continue to stay healthy, so they choose to after they get over those initial aches and pains that they had that brought them in, then yes. they choose maintenance care to take care of them, their bodies and keep themselves well over an extended period of time. The physiology is communicating better with itself and it functions better as a result. Absolutely, and speaking of, of um, different age groups, um, I hear some misconceptions about I'm too old for chiropractic or uh, my child's too young to bring into a chiropractor. I'm sure you hear that as well, and I know we discussed even that you uh, adjusted your, your child uh, shortly after birth. Yes, 15 minutes old, I checked my child. He had a misalignment and a structural shift. We corrected that. His whole body relaxed. It was the first time he smiled at me. It melted my heart. It was so awesome. That's an awesome story. That's yeah. awesome. Youngest patient I've had in the office, four days. Um, mm -hmm. How about you? What's the youngest patient uh, you've had in the days. office? Two days. Two days. Yeah, awesome. I was taking care of the mother, and uh, it was an interesting story. The mother 
um, was on her way to the hospital and she told her husband, we gotta stop by the chiropractor. I wanna get adjusted before I go to the hospital so that way I know that the birth uh, takes place as easily as possible. And then as soon as she brought the baby home, one of their first stops was coming into the office. So, awesome, very yeah. neat. And then as far as the other end of the spectrum, uh, patients that are, they say, I'm too old or I can't be helped. I'm sure you may have heard that as well. Sure. Um, I can't be helped is typically a fear-based fear response. And also maybe somebody has told them not to go to the chiropractor because of safety concerns. Sure. There's a variety of different techniques for how we take care of any population group. Um, and so any person who's aged, yes, they're gonna have issues. Maybe we're not gonna correct those issues, but we can many times halt the process, um, stop that process from progressing and improve the quality of life, improve the functionality of their day-to-day -day routine. Um, in most geriatric populations, the ability to take care of yourself is the most important thing in their life. That, that sense of independence, that level of independence that they can operate and not worry about falling down or, or getting hurt, having the body work better, work the way it's supposed to, allows that to happen. Yep. You brought up some excellent points. Yep. And here in Phoenix, so one of the biggest things I hear from my elderly patients is, how long can I continue to golf, Doc? Yes. <laughs> and yes. so we want them to be able to do whatever it is that they want to do. We want to be able to have them continue to do that for as long as possible. So those were some great points. Thanks, Dr. Zach, for joining Thank you. us. The key here, I guess, is though, if you do have any questions about chiropractic or you have family members, you have friends, whatever the case may be, Ask your chiropractor, bring your family members in, let them see you get adjusted. So that way they can diminish those fears that they have. They can ask any questions that they have. They can get themselves under care and begin experiencing the help that you found for yourself. Yeah, I think that went well. Yeah, I enjoyed it.